Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. It's a great pleasure and privilege for me to welcome you all to Karolinska Institutet's Aula Medica for the 2016 Nobel Lecture in Physiology or Medicine. My name is Karin Dahlman Wright and I serve as Acting Vice Chancellor of Karolinska Institutet. During the Nobel Week, and particularly during the Nobel Lectures, we celebrate science and the unique contributions of some exceptional individuals. Research is a way of exploring our thirst for knowledge, testing our own limits, and having an outlet for our creativity and competitive spirit. Within physiology or medicine, the ultimate goal is to achieve scientific breakthroughs that change our view of human health, disease, and normal vital processes to the benefit of individuals as well as society at large. Today, it's an honor for me to extend my warmest welcome on behalf of the Karolinska Institute to Yoshinori Uzumi, the 2016 Nobel Laureate in Physiology or Medicine, who is receiving the Nobel Prize for elucidating mechanisms underly underlying autophagy, a fundamental process for degrading and recycling cellular components. I now call upon Maria Masucci, Professor of Viro Virology and a member of the Nobel Committee for Physiology or Medicine, who will introduce the laureate. Dear Nobel Laureate, Acting Vice-Chancellor, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege and an honor for me to introduce this year's Nobel Lecture by Lo Nobel Laureate Yoshinori Osumi. The Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institute has awarded the 2016 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine to Dr. Osumi for his discoveries on the mechanism of autophagy. Autophagy, which means literally self-eating, is an evolutionary conserved pro physiological process by which eukaryotic cells digest the part of their own content to release energy or to recycle the building blocks that are required for the production of proteins, sugars, and fats. Autophagy was first observed more than 50 years ago shortly after the discovery by um, Christian de Duve of the lysosome. The lysosome is the recycling compartment on the cells where cellular components are actually destroyed. And uh, Christian de Duve received for his discovery the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1974. While studying the lysosome, uh, scientists discovered another uh, part vesicle in the cells, uh, which uh, sequestered into a double-strand, double-layer membrane parts of the cytoplasm and large components such as protein aggregates and, uh, and organelles. Uh, using a different type of uh, visualization method, the fractionation procedures, they could also observe that vesicles appear in the cytoplasm of cells which are exposed to different types of stress, and that these vesicles grew to engulf parts of the cytoplasm and finally fused to the lysosome, where uh, their content is destroyed. For almost 30 years, very few scientists studied autophagy. And in fact, the molecular mechanism of this phenomenon, its significance, remain largely unknown. The discoveries of Yoshinori Osumi changed dramatically this uh, field of research. He, for his study, focused on a unicellular organism, the baker's yeast, and discovered, first of all, that uh, autophagy is conserved in this uh, organism and can be easily visualized in a simple organism like the, this unicellular organism. He then went on to develop a very clever screening method 
that allowed uh, uh, to identify a large number of genes that are essential for the development of autophagy. And sequ se subsequently, he and his colleagues went on to elucidate the function of the product of these genes, which at the end, both in yeast and in mammalian cells, which at the end led to a, a very comprehensive view of the mechanism of autophagy and which allowed further understanding of the importance of this phenomenon for both physiology and disease. We are now very much looking forward to hear from Professor Osumi himself the history of how scientific curiosity, hard work and endurance have led to our current understanding of autophagy as a fundamental physiological process with the huge implication for both health and disease. But before giving the word to Professor Osumi, I would like to say a few words on the Nobel laureate himself. Yoshinori Osumi was born in Fukuoka, Japan in 1945, and he received his doctorate degree from the University of Tokyo in 1974. After a postdoctoral training at the Rockefeller University in New York, he returned to Tokyo University where he started slowly to climb the uh, academic career ladder, being first an assistant uh, um, assi scientist, a lecturer, and an assistant professor. In 1996, he was appointed professor at the National Institute of Basic Research in Okazaki City. And from 94, 2004 to 2009, he was also professor at the Graduate University of Western Advanced Study in Hayama. He officially retired in 1914, but he is still working full time. And I understand also during uh, holiday, uh, during weekends. And uh, he, well, and he is currently serving as uh, a professor at Tokyo University Institute of Technology, where he heads a cell biology research unit. Uh, the outstanding work of Professor Uxumi has been recognized by many different prizes. And just to mention a few, we received the Tokyo Prize for Basic Science in 2012, the Gardner Foundation Award in 2015, and only a few days ago, he received the Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences. We really look forward to Dr. Osumi uh, Nobel Lecture with the title Autophagy and Intercellular Re Recycling uh, System. And please join me in welcoming Professor Osumi on stage. It's great honor to, for me to be here as a recipient of Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. First, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Karolinska Institute and Nobel Foundation for this wonderful opportunity. And I would like to say thank to all the audience here today. Let's begin. I believe system, uh, science is a uh, system of knowledge that is gradually accumulated by society, but it's also inherently human activity. So I believe that every scientist is a product of the era they, which in uh, live. So today I would like to start my talk from a brief introduction of my life then give a historical overview of 
our work. And I was born, oh, sorry. I was born in uh, Fukuoka, southern Jap Japan, in 1945, half years before the end of World War II. That w this was a very challenging time in Japan, and everyone had difficulty getting basic, uh, basic daily necessities, including food. I myself suffered severe malnutrition and was, was a very sicky child. Around this time, my mother got tuberculosis and had a, was a very, uh, spent a long time period bed bound. <coughs> Sorry, but she was miraculously able to recover thanks to the gift of just developed antibiotics from a family friend in Hawaii. I remember the word streptomycin and oleomycin without knowing what did that mean. My childhood were, home was surrounded by nature with rice paddies, streams, hills, and sea all nearby. I spent a lot of time outside catching a fish and picking plants. In elementary school, I was uh, engrossed in collecting insects and watching night sky. I would say this intimacy for nature had a strong influence on me. At that time, I vaguely longed to be a scientist. In high school, I joined to the chemistry cl club where I experienced the wonder of uh, chemical reactions. I entered the University of Tokyo, where I initially hoped to be a chemist. Soon, but soon I had difficulty to find a field to work in. Thankfully, this was a time when central dogma was just being established. Molecular biology immediately fascinated me so I decided to join the lab of Kazutomo Imahori as a graduate student. There, I began my research career studying ribosome, which is a machinery of protein synthesis. This period made me keenly aware of the continuous nature of protein synthesis within cell. I gradually become interested in uh, uncharted function biomembrane. So I worked on the mechanism of action of collagen E3, which is a cytotoxic protein that inhibits protein synthesis by binding a receptor on the mem membrane of other cell. After finishing my doctoral uh, studies, I enrolled in the lab of Gerald Edelman at Rockefeller University, New York. There, I, uh, during my uh, final year in Dr. Edelman's lab, I worked with Mike Jarzwinski on the initiation mechanism of DNA reification in yeast, which was my first encounter with yeast as an experimental organism. At the end of 1977, I returned to Japan as an assistant professor in Yasuhiro Andaku's lab at the Tokyo, uh, University of Tokyo. Dr. Andaku's entire lab was tasked on, on with studying uh, transporters and uh, uh, respiratory chain in E. coli. But fortunately, he allowed me to start his work. After a period of uh, reflection, I decided to work on the uh, East Bakio. I'm not a competitive person, but rather prefer to work on a subject that is not factionable. This EM picture shows uh, uh, East Bakio. Uh, you don't see any structure inside the Bakio. At that time, Bakio was sold just a, uh, sorry, uh, 
it's normal than the garbage dump in the cell, but I thought it must play yet unknown role in cell physiology. And I was able to show uh, active transports uh, of amino acid and calcium ions through the vacuole membrane, providing evidence that vacuole is important for homeostasis of metabolites and the ions. We also described the uh, novel proton pump on the vacuole membrane, V type ATPase, which generates a proton gradient across the membrane, vacuole membrane. In 1988, I was able to start my own lab, consisting just myself at the College of Arts and Science at the University of Tokyo. I decided to devote myself to a lytic function of East Bakio. Since it is an uh, acidic compartment and contains various uh, hydrolytic enzymes, so I thought it might be homologous to lysosome. However, I had no concrete idea how it to approach this problem. Before going to experimental de details, I will briefly touch on protein uh, metabolism in cell. Proteins, which are the polymer of amino acid, are the key uh, player in all biological processes. Uh, central dogma stated that the protein is synthesized according to their genetic information encoded in DNA through RNA. Since then, many researchers have studied how to understand gene expression and protein synthesis. Recent progress in cell biology has revealed how each protein localized to its specific destination in the cell. We know now each protein is ingeniously organized through the process of intracellular trafficking. However, one aspect that is missing from this picture was the degradation of protein within cell. When I held a biology class for a first year undergraduate student, I used to start my lecture with this uh, question. How many blood cells are made within just one second in our body? Cal calculation is simple and given an answer about three million cell per second. How about hemoglobin within the red blood cell? For the calculation shows that about one time 10 to the 15, one million billion hemoglobin molecules are synthesized per second. It follows that exactly the same amount of cells and protein are degraded. The key message is that uh, living cells are so dynamically maintained. Japanese climate is characterized by uh, four distinct seasons. That influences our culture, and students at school learn that everything are continuously changing. Plant leaves uh, offer an excellent example. In spring, uh, ribs develop and then actively synthesize starch by sunlight. But in autumn, leaves turn yellow and fall off. What we see as a beautiful aut autumn color is act actually caused by the degradation of leaves photosynthetic machinery. Green uh, chloroplast are completely uh, degraded and resulting amino acid are transport to the trunk. Similarly, uh, rice leaves turn yellow at harvest time. All protein in the leaves are degraded and transported to make pro proteins in rice grain for next generation. These examples demonstrate that degradation is not adverse to the process, but rather it's essential for new construction or regeneration. Let's think about the human body. 
our body makes about two to 300 grams of protein every day, but we only intake about 70 to 80 grams of protein for, from the diet. The amino acid required for protein synthesis mostly come from the degradation of our body's own proteins. Life is maintained tightly controlled balance between synthesis and degradation and recycling the essential for, for life. Early pioneer in the field of protein me metabolism was Rudolf Schoenheimer, who in 1930s uh, proposed the concept of protein turnover. However, uh, unfortunately, his idea was not widely accepted. The monumental breakthrough come from uh, come in the 1950s with the discovery of rhizome by Christian Dubuque. <coughs> Soon after, researchers at Rockefeller University analyzed the process of the uh, delivery of our own cellular component to rhizome by electron microscopy, a process which Christian Dubuque coined autophagy in 1962 from the Greek for self-eating. Glenn Mortimer and Parseglin afterward uh, produced informative works by uh, tackling both physiological meaning and regulation of autophagy on ma in mammals. Despite this, our standing, uh, understanding of the molecular mechanism of autophagy remained in its infancy for many years. In, mean, in the meantime, another intracellular protein degradation system, ubiquitin proteasome system, was discovered as it became clear that this system plays important roles on the, in the regulation of variety of cellular process. Protein degradation suddenly attracted a huge amount of in, uh, <coughs> attention in biological research. This was ultimately recognized by the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2004 was, <coughs> was awarded, which was awarded to uh, these three scientists shown here. But the field of lysosome degradation and autophagy still remained quiet. Now let's return to my work. Assuming that the vacuole function as a rate compartment, the question I had were when, what, and how such spasmic constituent go across the vacuole membrane and become accessible to vacuolar enzymes. First, I searched uh, what condition we must, where massive protein degradation may, might occur in each cell life cycle. Spore formation is a meiotic process that generates false spores and is induced by the depletion of nitrogen, the essential element for amino acids. I reason that this uh, dramatic cellular remodeling should require a degradation of pre-existing protein to make necessary proteins. I have to admit that I have always love to observe each cell by light microscopy. The vacuole is relatively large and it's only cle clearly visible organella in the cell. And inside of the vacuole is just a solid solution. So I knew that it is easy to see structure if they were inside the vacuole. I probably spent more time sitting at the microscope than anyone else at that time. I carefully observed the early stage of sporulation, but I couldn't see any significant change in the cell. I conceived to use a vacuole proteinase deficient mutant to, block, to pr prevent further degradation. Fortunately, Elizabeth Jones had uh, donated many proteins uh, mutant in to East Genetic Stock Center. So I, I obtained this strain and shifted to the nitrogen 
depleted medium. Looking down uh, the microscope, I saw many spherical structures vigorously moving around the vacuole. These structures appeared within uh, 30 minutes and almost completely filled the vacuole after three to four hours. For me, this observation marked the exact starting point for more than 27 years of autophagy research. The reason I could discover this phenomena with only a common low magnification light microscopy or to the move, uh, vigorous movement of this structure by bowling and motion in otherwise static yeast cells. This dramatic change was enough to convince me that I encountered an unknown and fascinating phenomenon. Soon, Kazuhiko Takeshige showed this phenomenon is not restricted to sporulation, but it's a general cellular response to a range of uh, starvation con nutrient starvation condition. <coughs> then I called uh, extra electron microscopist, uh, Mrs. Baba and uh, Masako Osumi, to capture the morphology of this phenomena within cell by electron microscopy. Their effort produced beautiful and cons conclusive image of the entire autophagy process, as shown in the se following se several slides. This six, six section image of nitrogen starved cell at four, three hours, you can see spherical structure within vacuum. And this high magnification image shows these structures are bounded by a single membrane, and their contents are exactly the same as a portion of cytoplasm. Uh, cyto cytoplasmic structure such as ER here, suggesting a non-selective uh, sequestration of cytoplasmic uh, uh, component. We also observe the mem membrane sac uh, just uh, end up in a portion of the cytosol next to the vacuole. After completion of expansion and sealing, we could see the double membrane structure of yeast autophagosome. And this uh, fr freeze fracture image showed a fusion event between autophagosome with vacuolar membrane. Th there, uh, outer membrane of autophagosome is continuous with the vacuolar membrane. Here also, you, you can see uh, inner membrane structure, which we named autophagic bodies. Autophagic body uh, is uh, body occasionally contain mitochondria shown several uh, he here and here and here. So that means autophagic uh, oh <coughs> Autophagy can degrade not only cytosolic protein, but also supramolecular structure like ribosome and even entire organelle, which is a characteristic, characteristic feature of autophagy. This slide shows the scheme of autophagic process in yeast. When cells are faced with starvation condition, Small membrane sac appear next to the vacuole and expand to end up a portion of cytoplasm. Then double membrane structure or phagosome target to the vacuole and fuse with uh, vacuole membrane, releasing in, uh, inner membrane structure into the vacuole. In wild type cell, this structure immediately disrupted by vacuole enzyme. The protein is deficient mutant allowed us to follow the progression of autophagy as an accumulation of autophagic bodies. The membrane dynamics of this process was 
essentially the same as non-mammalian autophagy, though Bacchio is much larger than lysosome. As you know, uh, yeast is a very good organ to dissection or for dissection of complicated biological phenomena through genetic analysis. I was inspired by beautiful work by Lee Hartwell, which unlocked the, the cell cycle from, uh, through e CDC mutant, and also by uncovering of a circulatory pathway using sec mutant by Landy Sheckman. I d we therefore set out to obtain autophagy defective mutant to find the gene involved in autophagy. However, at that time I had no idea how autophagy defective mutant would behave. So we decided to perform a simple uh, morphological screening for mutant that do not accumulate autophagic body under starvation condition. Miki Skada, one of the, my first uh, uh, graduate student, made a great contribution during this screening process by assessing thousands of mutagenized cells by, by one, one by one for mutant lacking autophagic body. See, she identified the first autophagy defect mutant, which we named APG1-1, later renamed to ATG1. This mutant This mutant uh, cannot uh, pr uh, proceed uh, protein degradation, but they grew normally in rich medium and otherwise had no obvious uh, phenotype. However, soon we found that ATG1 mutant die sooner than wild type cell during long period of starvation shown here. Assuming that this phenotype is caused by the defect in autophagy, Miki uh, ran another screen assessing the viability of mutagenized cell first and successfully obtained about 100, 100 autophagy defect mutant. Genetic analysis of this mutant revealed 14 ATG mutant. We know now eight Teen ATG genes are essential for starvation induced autophagy in yeast. So I can say this initial screen was very effective. Soon our work by electron microscopy suggested that all these ATG genes are defective in the formation of autophagosomes, the most uh, crucial event in autophagy. The first, uh, the next step was to determine uh, protein encoded by these ATG genes. The first gene, ATG1, s turned out to, to encode uh, protein kinase, but most of the ATG genes cloned by our group and the others were completely novel and amino acid sequence of, uh, did not tell us anything about their function. That was a difficult time for us. Uh, my lab in College of Arts and Science was quite small and had no fancy equipment. Uh, funding was limited and, and I had only a few colleagues, but it, it without doubt that eight years in that lab were the foundation of my work in autophagy. In 1996, I became a professor at the National Institute of Basic Biology in Okazaki, which provided us with a very conducive uh, research environment. I asked Thomas Yoshimori to join our lab as an associate professor to start work on autophagy in mammals, mammalian cell, and also uh, Takeshi Noda and Yoshi Kamada to join 
as, as assistant professor. The following year, Noble Mizushima came into my lab as a postdoc. Year by year, uh, talented postdoc, there are researchers and graduate students gathered to my lab. The cloning of ATG genes uh, proceed much faster than I expected, thanks to the collaboration of Mariko Sumi's lab and also com uh, completion of East Gen whole genome project. The first breakthrough was done by Nobel Mizushima. When he examined the products of ATG12, he found two bands, one of which runs much uh, high molecular weight. He also realized in, well, sorry. He also found uh, <coughs> in uh, ATG5, 7, and 10, uh, this high molecular weight band is missing. I won't go further uh, in detail. We found that ATG12 is a novel ubiquitin like. Uh, molecule, and it's activated by E1 enzyme, ATG7, then transferred to E2 enzyme, ATG10, and finally uh, form a bond with ATG5. To, to and finally, this ATG12-5 conjugate is, is uh, bound by ATG7. Uh, 16 dimers. This discovery of this, uh, the, the discovery of this enzyme system uncovered the function of five ATG genes at all at once. Another molecule we are interested in was ATG8 because immuno electron microscopy showed that ATG8 is localized to the autophagy related membrane as shown here. suggesting that a good marker for membrane biogenesis. Two talented graduate students, uh, Takayoshi Kirisako and Yoshinobu Ichimura, unveiled another unique conjugation system. ATG8 is synthesized as a precursor that is processed by ATG, uh, ATG4 proteins, and is activated by the same E1 enzyme, ATG7, and then transfer to ATG3, but rather forming with a conjugate with protein, ATG8 forms a bond with one of the major uh, membrane phospholipid, phosphatidylethanolamine. Thus, uh, to our surprise, we found about half of ATG genes are involved in to these conjugation systems. In 1998, Takeshi Noda found that rapamycin induces the autophagy, uh, even cells are grown in a rich medium. As rapamycin is the inhibitor of TOL kinase, we therefore propose TOL and TOL kinase is uh, the most upstream regulator of autophagy. Meantime, Yoshi Kamada and uh, Tomoko Nakoshi studied the early step of autophagy and showed ATG13 and 17 played an important role in autophagy induction and uh, you know, are necessary for ATG1 kinase activation. Kihara, Akio Kihara also found the autophagy requires specific PI3 kinase complex one, which is distinct from the predominant uh, complex, eight, uh, complex two. Within a decade of our research in NMEB, we found two more ATG proteins that interact with each other, as well as ATG17, that re regulate ATG1 kinase activity. We concluded that total 18 ATG proteins are essential for autophagy, and those proteins can be classified into six functional groups shown here, ATG1 kinase complex uh, and regulator, ATG uh, PI3 kinase complex, and two conjugation system, and ATG9 sole membrane protein 
among ATG in and ATG2, ATG18 uh, complex. Also during my our time at NIBB, Nobel Mizushima and Yoshimori, uh, Tamotsu Yoshimori began to study mammalian autophagy and successfully showed that ATG12 system uh, well conserved in mammalian cell. And so, <coughs> uh, Tamotsu definitely, def def definitively proved that LCC uh, ATG8 homologue can be used as a very effective marker of autophagy progression in mammalian cell. At around this time, two of my colleague, two colleagues, uh, Hideki Hanaoka and Koki Yoshimoto, succeeded to identify ATG genes in plant cell. Although the homology of ATG genes are low, but ATG system is well consumed from east to mammals and plan, indicating that the core uh, machinery of autophagy are uh, acquired at an early stage of evolution. The identification of ATG genes essential for autophagy changed the uh, entire landscape of autophagy research. One accept aspect of this evolution is that we can uh, now visualize the process of autophagy by fluorescence microscopy using ATG protein as markers. Nobel Mizushima took advantage of this when he constructed a transgenic mouse expressing GFPLC3. This tool was allowed to uh, us to access, assess how much autophagy occurs in every organ in mouse body. This mouse has been distributed all over the world. Noboru also developed the first ATG1 knockout mouse and which allowed to show autophagy plays crucial roles for survival at birth. And Komatsu, uh, Masaki Komatsu showed the uh, by use, uh, making a conditional ATG7 knockout mouse, he showed that autophagy is uh, essential for uh, defective mutant uh, accumulate uh, ubiquitinated protein and uh, uh, ultimately tumor in the liver. From this point, manipulation of ATG genes in various organisms different cell type, variety of tissue and organs, and the individuals started <coughs> uh, in many labs around the world and revealed a burst array of physiological function of autophagy. The relevance of autophagy in various uh, diseases are getting clear. Uh, this rapid expansion of autophagy would not have been possible without a concerted effort of autophagy researchers all over the world. But this huge area falls outside the scope of my talk today. I mentioned earlier that nutrient recycling is the most primary, primary function of autophagy, which is uh, evolutional adaptation to a persistent a challenge of, uh, fun, of nutrient limitation, starvation. Recent work has shown that another important function of autophagy, in addition to the bulk recycling of portion of cytoplasm, autophagy is also able to pick and choose excess or harmful material from the cytoplasm in a selective manner. Target of this, uh, this Degradation includes specific protein, supramolecular structure, protein aggregate, organelle, and even virus and invasive bacteria. Now, it is well accepted that autophagy plays an essential role to maintenance of the cellular homeostasis. 
defect in this quality control may cause various abnormality, health problem, and disease. This kind of autophagy is generally uh, not random, and, but selective. Also using East Dan Kriansky has studied CBT pathway, the first identified model system of selective autophagy. In these, several receptors for selective autophagy has been found as shown here. In now, various uh, selective mode of autophagy has become one of the most exciting field in autophagy research. We are now beginning to arrive at the clear understanding to for some of these selective types of autophagy, such as mitochondrial autophagy. But uh, this is an area in which we need more research to obtain the precise molecular details. Even in the simple yeast system, many fundamental questions uh, remain to be answered. For this reason, my group is still working on yeast autophagy. Also, we have <coughs> identified the core component of autophagosome formation. The question of where and how these protein function in the cell remained. Uh, <coughs> Kuninori Suzuki made a major contribution on this area. First, he found that autophagy is induced. Most ATG protein localized at least partly a dot structure next to the vacuole. He also showed that uh, autophagosome is generated from this dot structure. We call pre autophagosome structure the past. We systematically analyzed the mutual relationship between ATG protein to uncover the uh, how the pass is organized and uh, found the causal relationship among six functional groups as shown in this slide. ATG7, ATG1, 13 complexes, of, uh, and then ATG9 comes, something like that. Okay. <coughs> and Recent uh, improvement of the fluorescent mi microscopy. Well, wow, sorry. I, no. sorry. Sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, recent uh, microscope uh, showed this is a uh, ATG 17. Uh, that means a, a, a dimer form of ATG1729131 complex. As you see here, ATG17 is just moving around in the side soil and under growing condition. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What's happened? Sorry. <laughs> wow. What should I do? <laughs> Sorry. That won't work. Someone help me? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> could, you, could you help me? Okay. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Under starvation condition, 80. Oh, I was. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Under starvation condition, uh, a small portion of 817 complex come to the past, as shown here. That means only a portion of uh, 
plotting, uh, doing uh, autofile form formation under starvation conditions. But now we know that uh, hierarchical uh, relationship between ATG protein reflects the temporal sequence of events that occur during autophagosome formation shown here. Uh, closed and long-term collaboration with Nobu Nob or Noda and the late Dr. Fuyuhiko Inagaki successfully provide us with structural information of many ATG protein and their complex, which are really crucial for our understanding of their function. Now I'd like to talk briefly about the recent work on the early step of both phagosome formation, which were mostly done by Hayashi Yamamoto and Nobu Onoda. <coughs> ATG13 is a key player that has a, which has a qu quite unique uh, structure that is made in a terminal globular domain, and the rest is just a uh, uh, long denatured, uh, naturally disordered region. In this region, we can found many phosphorylated residue by talk kinase under starvation. Uh, these uh, it is 13 uh, residue that quickly dis they phosphorylated, which allow to bound to ATG1 and ATG17 via specific site in this order region, resulting in the formation of dimer of ATG1, 13, 17, 29, 31 complex. As you see here, uh, we found the uh, specific binding site of uh, ATG13 to ATG1 and also we uh, could identify the binding site of ATG17 to the ATG13 and in the region of this other region. So ATG13, this for, for sedated, um, ATG13 can bound ATG71 and ATG17, 29, 31 complex, but uh, then Kreonsky's group showed the real actual number of ATG protein at the past is about 30 to 40. So the next question we had is how these high, uh, uh, higher uh, order structure is formed. Recently we found um, uh, another binding site of ATG17 in the disorder region. And I will show the, our image of the early step of autophosphorus formation. As I said, ATG13 has a long uh, disorder region. And after the phosphorylation of these residue, uh, allowed to bound to ATG1 uh, kinase uh, at certain terms. And this region is a binding site of ATG17. It formed this kind of complex. And we found another uh, uh, binding site of ATG17. It's bound to the another ATG, uh, this complex. So that allowed to the forming a uh, higher order of this uh, structure. That m means we can have more uh, Multimeric uh, form of this uh, ATG1 complex. Uh, this is important for activation of ATG1 kinase. Uh, the, this adjacent ATG1 by the uh, autophosphorylation. And also, we found recently, show, Suzuki showed the uh, ATG uh, uh, and terminal domain. Uh, bound to the ATG9, ATG9 to recruit the ATG9 basic group. So uh, this is our image of the early step of autoph autophagy, autophagosome formation. So these results show the ATG uh, pass is not a, 
a static or a stable complex and uh, pass is uh, flexible ha supermolecular assembly made up many ATG complex and also membrane structures and pass assembly is also highly regulated by modification and transient interaction of ATG protein at each stage of membrane formation. Okay. Now, at present, my group is focused on the physiological meaning of autophagy in yeast. In a way, I feel we have come full circle by going back to the original question, when and how and what is degraded by autophagy. Uh, by using the uh, latest analytical tools, Hon Han Han and Tomoko Kawamata uh, showed that massive RNA is degraded via autophagy, and the resulting base uh, uh, transport out from the cell. It's not a recycling system. So, I believe we need uh, more knowledge about the degradation process and also assess the degradation product of the autophagy and how they are uh, transported out from the vacuole to the cytoplasm and how they affect the me me cellular metabolism. So th those are questions we are trying to so my autophagy research was always been driven by nothing more than uh, intellectual curiosity and thirst to get better understanding of life through protein, uh, protein dynamics in the cell. When I started my work, I never thought uh, autophagy become so uh, relevant to disease as diverse as neurodegeneration, infectious disease, cancer, and others in such a short time. But now autophagy research has become a major field in biology. And this figure pre presents that the number of paper related to autophagy is so rapidly increasing. It goes without saying that this is, this is thanks to the large part, to the tremendous work, uh, effort of many researchers all over the world. So I'd like to express my sincere thanks to share this honor with all of them. However, this figure also tells us it takes a while to establish one field, truly, uh, Original discovery in science are often triggered by unpredictable and un unforeseen small findings. Nowadays, distance between basic discovery and practical application is getting closer. While it is exciting, but scientists are now increasingly required to provide evidence of immediate and tangible application of their work. It is true, <coughs> truly my hope uh, that society is able to nurture not only purpose-oriented science, but also science as a core of cultural activity. If my small idea and decades of work had made a contribution to fundamental science through autophagy and Nobel Foundation recognize the basic nature of uh, this work with this prize. It is honestly my great pleasure and satisfaction as a basic scientist. Finally, I, would, uh, I must acknowledge all, all good fortune I had, have, have had throughout my career the excellent colleagues who have joined me on this journey, great effort of many the collaborators, good friends, and continuous support of many grants. 
and my caring family, especially my wife, Mariko. Thank you for attention.